Hello everyone, good morning. Today is 20th of January. My name is Sahil and welcome to the newspaper analysis. Guys, in the today's newspaper analysis, we will be taking up the complete analysis of the Hindu newspaper. The PDF that I will use here, you can download the description box. Now, first of all, let's see the overview of the important articles into the today's newspaper. So, first of all, uh, we can see that there is a text and the context page of the Hindu, fine, which is similar to the explained section of the Indian Express. Now, into this text and context page, the first article is talking about the Microsoft strides into the gaming metaverse. So, the Microsoft has, uh, has, has acquired the Activision Blizzard. Now, we basically, this article is not very much important with respect to the UPSC examination as acquisition of one another company is being talked about. However, when we talk about the idea of the metaverse, now the Facebook is actively working onto the idea of the metaverse. Metaverse is just like a creation of a parallel universe which will be virtual. You can enter there, you can have different avatars there, you can live completely a different life into a metaverse. So this idea of metaverse has gained a lot of popularity and we have also discussed this particular concept many number of times in our newspaper analysis. Then further moving on, after that here, here is why the electoral bond scheme must go. So here just we will be taking up certain aspects with respect to the electoral scheme, electoral bonds and the problems that are there. Then further guys moving on to the Hindu newspaper. This is the page number one and the first article here we can see that the Supreme Court is steering the payments. So we will be seeing this particular thing under the lens of the judicial activism. Then further, the political news etc. has been given, not important. And now guys, this particular article, it talks about the union government's decision to change the IS cadre rules. So how it will be impacting the federalism in India, we'll see this particular thing. Then further moving on, new Haryana law may hit jobs, growth, fine. Now guys, this particular article, it is talking about the recent reservation of 75%, we'll see this particular article. Then further moving on, the city section, fine, nothing very much important has been provided here into this particular thing. Now guys, just uh, I wanted to uh, briefly discuss here only, there is a mentorship program of the Delhi government which have now being criticized by the opposition parties. Fine, uh, just what this particular thing is, we will be seeing. Now, uh, see this thing. Basically, a Desh Ke Mentor program was launched by the Delhi government in which it was said that the people who have been educated or who have been expert into their fields, they can choose some, ch uh, some children whom they will be mentoring. Is it clear? So this was a voluntary program to mentor the students. Is it clear? Let's say I am a dancer, I can mentor the students that how to make a career into the dancing and all such kind of thing was there. Now it has been said by the opposition parties that here the people are being connected with the children Run. many a times these people who are acting as mentors they might be some people with compromised backgrounds is it clear or not they can harass the children so therefore this mentor mentorship program needs to be disc discontinued so this particular controversy is going on fine then further moving on after that into the city section fine uh, uh, basically here we can see that the deep dip in eastern swamp deer number so we will be seeing it with respect to the environment and ecology fine then guys further after that we reach to the editorial page now what uh, Vladimir Putin really wants. So basically guys, the internal dynamics of the Russia, they have been talked about here since the time of the Cold War up till now. What are the basically exigencies in Russia? What are the priorities within the Russia? It has been talked about. Now guys, this particular article is too much focused within the internal affairs. So with respect to the UPSC general studies, not very much important article. However, if you want in leisure time, you can still read it. Then this article, Democratize and Empower City Government. This article is very good article with respect to the GS paper number two issues. Fine, a very good article. We will be seeing this thing. Then uh, all all in the fray. This article it is talking about the Goa elections. Fine, into this thing. What are the stakes, etc. I have been talked. Political article not relevant. Technology tangle. So it is talking about the rollout of the 5G technologies into the USA and a snack that has developed. We will briefly be seeing that what have been what has happened here. Then uh, the many problem of online anonymity. Okay, so basically pseudonymous concept has a pseudonymous phenomena has been discussed here why the anonymity brings the problems what are the challenges we'll see this article then a dangerous precedent this article also we will be seeing that how basically within the elections with within the elections many a times the union government is misusing its power such what dimension has been provided we'll see it then guys a cast calculus into the up fine uh, basically if uh, so basically thus SP and the BJP's narrative are being discussed and they have been tied with the caste goals. Fine. Now, much of the politics, political narrative has been provided into this article. Please don't go into this. 
then further uh, moving uh, then we reach to the page number eight here guys we can see that basically uh, certain issues regional issues etc have been mentioned the IES card the rule change has been mentioned we will be covering in this article no foreign dignitary dignitaries as chief guest at the republic day event now guys this particular thing has happened because number one there have been a few scares okay where there are there are few intels that the, there might be the threat and secondly the rising number of covid-19 cases and all these reasons are there that the chief guest dignitaries will not be there however in virtual mode find they can join then further moving on after that guys the political articles etc fine please please uh, ignore these articles rising number of covid 19 cases are being talked about fine then here we can see special camps to register workers on to the eshram portal so basically uh, what had happened the supreme court after this uh, COVID-19 pandemic had directed the government that you don't have any data for the migrant workers. Is it clear? If in future migrant workers, they face any kind of a crisis, how we will provide relief to them? So please collect the data with respect to the migrant workers. So this eShram portal has been started on which the migrants can register them. However, as the enrollments were not much, so the special camps will now be started. Just that's it, what has been provided here. Then further moving on onto the world page, Taliban seeks Muslim nations recognition. Fine. We find this thing that into the, the, the Talibanis, they are wanting the legitimacy. Their funds have been frozen by the USA. Okay. Basically, they are not able to uh, kickstart their diplomatic relations and many of such kind of problems are there. So they want that at least the Muslim nations should recognize the Taliban government fine as a legitimate as, as a legitimate government. So this particular thing is going on. Then after that into the business Page. economic recovery is still uh, not uh, still yet to attain a durability says ikra indian oil production continues to decline so see these are the basically but corporate trends not important for your examination evolving thing that okay consumption increased this month consumption decreased this month not at all important fine then the sports page comes okay so that is all about this uh, overview and now let's take all these articles one by one in the detail now as we start our every class with the GS quote, so today we will be taking a quote from the Soren Kierkegaard, fine, one a, a very influential philosopher. Soren Kierkegaard, he says, people demand, people demand freedom of speech as a compensation for the freedom of thought which they seldom use. Okay, so very impactful quote. So they say that the people are asking for the freedom of speech as a compensation or freedom of thought. Is it clear? So rather than giving a thought, rather than giving a rational thinking, rather than giving a logic based thinking, what people just want, people just want the freedom of speech. Is it clear or not? So this is a kind of a half baked understanding onto the right way as how to use your speech. A speech needs to be accompanied with the thought. Clear that is a precondition of meaningful speech. We can use this particular idea in the answers related to the GS paper number two as well as GS paper number four. Even into the essays, such kind of dimensions could be asked because we have seen this year that the philosophical essays have been there. Now, taking up the first article. So, okay, so this first article we take from the text and the context page. So, this article is talking about the electoral bond scheme. Fine, guys, uh, basically. Uh, okay, just one uh, thing I want to tell you that this particular article has been from archives. Is it clear? So uh, basically the things that have been there earlier also they have been published. But now again in the renewed circumstances, we will be seeing this particular article. Now, basically the electoral bond scheme, first of all, what it is, I will explain the background. Now guys, in a democracy, in a democracy earlier also I have told you that the elections are very much important. Is it clear? Now for the elections, election campaigning is to be done. And for the election campaigning to reaching out to the voters, the election, the political parties, they need the money, they need the funding. Now in India, the state funding, direct state funding is not there. Direct state funding means that the state gives the money to the political parties that they can find the election. Indirect state funding means giving some support in some another way. Now the political parties they are given the access of electoral roles they are given some free they are given some time onto the uh, in for into the into the uh, on the radio etc that is something else but direct money is not given to the political parties so therefore political parties go to the people and they ask for the donations now guys there is a particular way of asking the donation that is the donation via the electoral bonds now guys this electoral bond scheme under this what happens 
let's say there is any one corporate there is any uh, one corporate it wants to give the money to the abc political party what this corporate can go this corporate can go to the state bank of india and can buy from the state bank of india the electoral bonds can buy from the state bank of india electoral bonds now by, while buying this electoral bonds fine this poll corporate can say that okay i will not uh, show my identity i want to give the anonymous donation now these electoral bonds will be given to this a abc political party and abc political party just can redeem this electoral bond into their account and will get the money now guys into this particular thing there are two circumstances that are there number one this corporate it is maintaining an anonymous identity is it clear the poll the even the if the political parties when they will be providing that okay how much money we received they don't need to tell okay they just will be telling that okay we received let's say 100 crore rupees from electoral bond but who gave those 100 crore rupees in electoral bond their identity is not to be revealed is it clear so the anonymous funding is coming here this is one thing second one more issue is there guys second one more issue is there that what had happened just a couple of years back the government has removed the cap on to the profits that can be maximum profits that can be donated to a political party now if the pol if, if a corporate wants the 100% of profits can also be given to a political party now what happens a large number of problem opens up into this particular space what are the problems that are opening up see problem number one problem number one as a large number of anonymous donation can come as a large number of anonymous donation can come this can lead to the chronic capitalism this can lead to the chronic capitalism now what is this chronic capitalism first of all we need to understand so chronic capitalism is a situation where the corporates and the political party they are working hand in glove with each other the corporates they provide a large number of money to the political parties and political parties when they are into the power they dead they come out with such kind of laws which are giving direct benefit to the corporates is it clear so this is a situation of chronic capitalism now what can happen anonymously let say there is one particular corporate a very powerful corporate x now this x says that okay we will give the 10000 crore rupees to you the ruling government and after you win you need to come out with a policy which gives us the benefit so this particular thing is happening discreetly even the civil societies don't know such kind of thing is there why because who nobody knows that how much money has come this is leading to a kind of a problem now guys the second very big problem has been there that when we talk about the election it the into the election, Election, when the citizens are casting their vote they need to have the complete information that okay the political party who is coming fine from where else they are receiving more money because it has been found that money is a very effective way of buying the policy corporates can buy the policy so which corporate is sponsoring which political party we should know it but now because of this electoral bond anonymity is there the voters cannot know fine who is funding whose election campaign supreme court has provided that the right to know no, is an integral part of the right or right to freedom of expression under the Indian constitution and now as the information is not being given the fundamental right is being violated now guys there is one more problem that is there see now I have told you that the donations will be routed through the state bank of India find that through the state bank of India you can a corporate can buy electoral bond into the state bank of India understand this particular thing state bank of India is a public bank is it clear so therefore if the ruling government wants they can check from the state bank of India internally they can check without revealing to the public that who is donating the money to which political party and even the donors they also know that the sent ruling government can check in India we find that there have been the long-standing misuse of the investigative agencies by the ruling government so the donor knows fine that if I will donate to the opposition party if I will donate to other party then the central government will come to know so the, this is actually a way to squeeze out the donations of the rival political parties it is leading to another a yet another different kind of a problem after that guys the big another problem that comes here is that since 2018 the P petition has been filed into the Supreme Court that this electoral bonds need to be nullified fine it should be removed but up till now the Supreme Court has not taken any final decision into this particular direction and the Supreme Court's silence it is indirectly providing the benefit to the ruling party is it clear so therefore now it has been suggested that the electoral bonds should 
go away moreover one more problem which is not uh, discussed into this particular article i wanted to tell you here what i said you i said you here that basically now there is no limit that how much profits can be donated by a corporate now what can happen basically deliberately the shell companies can be created the shell companies deliberate uh, the dummy companies can be created now this shell companies first of all what can happen the black money can be rooted into the sh this shell company and then these shell companies what they can do they can then uh, basically whatever the black money has been oriented they can show that money is a profit and then that particular money can be given through to the political party through the electoral bonds is it clear neither we can know that whether a company is a shell company because anonymity is there is it clear and secondly as 100% of the profits can be done all the money that is coming can conveniently flow to the political party so all these are the problems in this direction that has come so that is all about this article and now we'll be moving to the next article okay so this particular article uh, here uh, basically we have taken this article from the hindu paper page number 1 states way options on is cadre rule change so this article will be important under gs paper number 2 issues related to the civil services as well as it will also be important into the federal issues fine so let's see that what has happened now guys there is a kind of a issue that is coming is that union government is now planning to acquire the power to acquire the overriding powers of, of the transfer of ias and ips officers into the central deputation clear now let's understand very briefly what has happened now guys first of all let's see the background the background so background goes like this that there are the ias officers ips officers who are working within the state government is it clear however from times to time that these ias and ips officers are also required by the central government okay so that they can work with the different different ministries they can work for the policy making and many such kind of things are there so what happens the central government from time to time fine the central government from time to time basically request the state government that please send some of the officers on the central deputation please send some of these officers on to the central deputation to the central government now the present system is this that the central government will make a request to the state government and will ask that okay please give us these 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 officers then a no objection certificate will be issued no objection certificate will be issued by the state government and only after this no objection certificate has been issued thus officers can be sent to the central government's deputation this is the present rule now where this particular thing has been mentioned this thing has been mentioned into the rule number 6 of the indian administrative services cadre rule 1954 so the rule number 6 now the union government wants to change this present arrangement the union government wants to change this particular present arrangement now there are the four changes that have been proposed by the union government let's first of all see what these four changes are and then we'll see see the implication of these four changes now number 1 the central government has proposed that see if the state government delays posting a state cadre officer to the center fine then what can happen central government uh, basically can unilaterally provide that from this particular date an officer has to come mandatorily for the central deputation they will not be waiting for the state government's decision they will not be requiring the noc if state government had not taken a decision unilaterally they can call such kind of an officer so what the rules uh, the new amendment says that it says that the officer shall stand relieved from the cadre from the date as may be specified by the central government so a unilateral decision can be taken no objection clearance from the state will not be needed fine this is one uh, pro, uh, amendment that is there then the change number 2 the change number 2 so the change number 2 uh, just a minute okay it goes like this that the center government will decide how many actual number of officers will be going to the deputation now what is the present system present system is this that the state government and the center government will discuss with each other and ultimately the state government will be sending specific number of officers to the central deputation and it has been said that the maximum of 40% of the cadre strength officers can be sent to the center maximum 40% can be of 40 percent of the total officers can be sent now the rule that is being changed here it has been said that the center will decide that how many officers they want so this 40 percent limit is being removed even if let's say 60 percent of the uh, state cadres officer are needed then they can be called 
fine so here this particular thing has been provided then the next thing uh, that is there is that the third pro uh, amendment that has come it is like this that if there is any kind of a disagreement between this kind of deputation fine if there is any kind of a disagreement between the center and state then the final matter will be decided by the central government so again the power has been given virtually into the hands of the central government and then the fourth change the fourth change it has been said that if there is a specific situation where services of a cadre officer are required by the central government in public interest now this public interest is a very vague term not defined properly so if in a public interest the services of any specific officer is needed then within a specific time the state government have to send that particular officer now this is guys the entire thing that has happened fine now in this particular step is being called as end, uh, this particular step has been called that it is breaching the federalism very many of the state governments particularly the opposition ruled state governments they had said that by this particular way the federalism is being stifled last year guys we have already seen our newspaper also that there was a controversy into the west bengal when the central government required the the one one of a bureaucrat into the west bengal's west bengal government to report and then basically uh, such kind of matter involved into a political controversy the chief minister of west bengal refused to send clear so therefore these kind of issues have been there now we need to see that how it will be evolving into the days to come that is all about it and now we'll be moving to the next article now new haryana law may hit jobs growth stakeholder so this article again taken from the hindu newspaper and this article will be important in gs paper number 1 issues of regionalism gs paper number 1 issues of regionalism and gs paper number 2 fine so first of all let me tell you that what is the background of this particular article and then we will be seeing it basically guys what has happened over the past few months or rather i'll say that over the past one or two year many of the state governments had come out with a specific law where they said that the employment will only be given or majorly employment should be reserved for the native people what they are coming they are coming with a law where the domicile condition has been made mandatory now this particular article talks about the law that has been announced recently by the haryana government and now it came in force so what haryana government says haryana government says that the jobs in which a 30000 rupees of salary jobs where up to 30000 rupees of salary are being paid such 75% of such jobs 75% of such jobs into the private sector are to be reserved for the people who are domiciled in haryana the haryana residents 75% of jobs up to 30000 rupees salary paying jobs will be given to them now this particular thing has been called as it is nothing but an attempt to mainstream the regionalism now basically the regionalism what happens in regionalism the first preference is given to the people who are native to one particular region fine the son of soil policy is many times are promoted under the son of soil policy it is believed that the first right over the state's resources will be of the native people now what has happened here as the jobs are being reserved only for the residents of haryana it is an attempt to bring the regionalism and regionalism has been a very big and persistent problem in india now basically uh, regionalism it ha it has its own challenges it creates a feeling of us versus them fine regionalism weakens a social fabric is it clear every every state if it will be coming for the regionalism what will happen one country one one nation's spirit will be lost now there are other technical problems also that has come now as this particular law has come into the force the uh, industries they say that it goes against the constitutional provisions and the constitution constitutional provision is basically the merit merit has been appreciated under the right to equality the merit can has to be appreciated now the private sector on them this particular law has been imposed so without even if let's say even if the natives are not having merit merit they have to be employed according to them the migrants if they will not find the jobs into the haryana they can go directly to the noida which is there into the uttar pradesh and it is which is very much into the vicinity so what will happen the haryana will lose its ease of doing business 
business. Then the next there is a survey, internal survey by the Garments Exporter and Manufacturers Association. And in this, it has been said that the 80% of the new investors, they say that they will not be considering the Haryana for the expansion if this particular law will not be reduced. So new investments will also not come into the Haryana. And it has been said that actually 99% of the employees into the MSME sector, they earn less than 30 per 30,000. So actually, virtually all the 99% of the workers into the MSMEs, they have to be hired from the state of Haryana only. Now, basically, it brings to large number of problems. Problem number one, that if you have to hire only from one state, the skills might not be adequate many times into the native people. So, this particular thing will be a problem. Second thing, it has been said that the local people, they are more entrenched from the migrant people and therefore, many a times, controlling the local people becomes very much problematic. This is the thing. Now, into this particular law, there have been the safeguards that in some specific circumstances, even outsiders can be hired for the set for the jobs where the salary of less than 30,000 rupees is there but for that there is an elaborate process and the clarifications and permissions are to be taken so it will be wasting a lot of time clear so therefore this particular thing has been criticized fine so in the regionalism in the politics of nativism you can use this particular article so that is all about it and now we'll be moving to the next article covid deaths supreme court to steer the payments now see just one development had happened here we now see that the third wave of COVID-19 is ongoing, the Omicron scare is there. Now, the Supreme Court has asked, had seen that state government's response in the cases where the sole breadwinners of the family have died or where basically the parents have been died and the children have become orphan. Clear? Supreme Court is of a view that the uh, ex gratia payments should be made to the families who have lost their earning members or who have lost a person in their family. So, the payments needed to be given. However, many of the state governments had not taken any effective stand into this particular direction. So now the Supreme Court what had said, Supreme Court had directed the, that the state government that they have to provide the sum of 50,000 rupees as an ex gratia to the families who have lost the members of their family. 50,000 rupees are to be mandatorily given. Supreme Court has passed this particular order. Now as as Supreme Court came out with this thing, we can call it as a step of the judicial activism. Now, first of all, what is judicial activism? See, judicial activism pertains to a phenomena where the judiciary proactively goes into the domain of executive or legislature and takes the comma, takes the role there. Fine. Now, when we talk about giving the money, this particular direction should have come through a law. Clear. The parliament should have taken a decision. Fine. The, the, the cabinet should have taken a decision. But now what has happened? The Supreme Court has taken a decision. So it shows overactive judiciary in India. Now guys, when we talk about the judicial activism, many a times it is criticized that it violates the theory of separation of power theory of separation of power which was given by the French philosopher Montesquieu. Now what is this theory of separation of power? It is said that in a democracy, the judiciary, the legislature and the executive, they need to be separated. Judiciary should work in its own domain, legislature should work in its own domain and executive should work in its own domain. So this is the theory of separation of powers. Now as the judiciary is taking the role of a legislature, as the judiciary is taking the role many times of executive even, so this is the breach of theory of of separation of power but many a times the judicial activism is actually required why because many a time we see that the legislature okay becomes apathetic there is a logjam that is there fine there is a kind of a indifference that many a times comes fine so therefore the judiciary has to step moreover when we see the indian political system in india we don't follow the watertight compartmentalization rather there is a kind of a very fluid kind of structure that has been there where the judiciary can enter into the times of crisis fine this has been provided here so guys this is all about this particular article beyond this nothing is there the implications are needed to be seen so that is all now we'll be moving to the next article technology tangle so this article pertains to the basically the USA where the 5G technology was to be rolled out uh, into the month of January from the 19th of January but, but now it has been stalled. Basically guys what had happened here we will be seeing this particular article. This article pertains to the developments in the USA so you don't need to go too much into the detail fine that is not required. 
सो बेसिकली वट हैड हैपेंड द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स फाइन दे आर द टेलीकॉम्युनिकेशन कंपनीज दे हैव बेसिकली बिडेड फॉर द फाइव जी स्पेक्ट्रम एंड दे एक्चुअली गॉट दे गॉट द सी बैंड रेडियो स्पेक्ट्रम एंड दे वर रेडी टू रोल आउट द फाइव जी सर्विसेज बट नाउ सडनली वट हैड हैपेंड दे हैव बीन स्टॉल्ड दैट दे कैन नॉट रोल आउट द फाइव जी सर्विसेज सो वट हैड हैपेंड इट हैज बीन सेट दैट देर विल बी द फ्लाइट डिस्ट्रप्शन दैट विल बी देयर सो इन द यू एस ए देर इज द फेडरल एविएशन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन नाउ द फेडरल एविएशन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दे हैड सेट दैट इफ द फाइव जी विल बी रोल्ड नियर द एयरपोर्ट इट विल इट विल डिस्टर्ब डिस्टर्ब functioning of the radar altimeters now what are these radar altimeters so radar altimeters are the devices onto the aircraft which provides the information with respect to the aircraft's altitude and they are very important equipments in ensuring the safety of a flight now there is one particular problem that has come the problem is this that the altimeters of the aircraft as well as the 5g services fine and many of other flight equipment they operate on to the c band radio spectrum and as they are operating on to the c band radio spectrum many a times there might be the interruption that might come though the frequencies are different but guys many a times some kind of a technical glitch can happen and then the functioning okay of the aircrafts might get disrupted so therefore for the time being near the airports the 5g services have been stalled now the tech technical solution is to be found out of this particular thing now first of all this thing can be resolved because the china had already rolled out the 5g so basically this uh, 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 snack that has come it needs it is needed to be resolved so this is all which has been carried into this particular article fine i hope that you have understood it nothing more than that and now we'll move to the next article democratize and empower the city government now this particular article will be important in gs paper number 2 जी एस पेपर नंबर टू फाइन इट विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू रिलेटेड टू द अर्बन लोकल बॉडीज एंड लोकल गवर्नेंस फाइन दिस आर्टिकल विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ लेट सी दैट वट द आर्टिकल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट बेसिकली रिसेंटली द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया हैड रिलीज अ रिपोर्ट वट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस रिपोर्ट दिस रिपोर्ट इज टाइटल डेट द स्टेट फाइनेंस स्टडी ऑफ बजट ऑफ ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू नाउ इन दिस रिपोर्ट द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया हैड प्रोवाइडेड दैट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द सिटी गवर्नमेंट्स थर्ड टीयर गवर्नमेंट्स दे प्ले अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल दे प्ले अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रंट लाइन रोल वेन द पेंडेमिक वॉज देयर इन कॉम्बेटिंग द प्लानिंग इन कॉम्बेटिंग द पेंडेमिक इन प्रोवाइडिंग द हेल्थ केयर सर्विसेज क्वारंटीन सर्विसेज एंड ऑल such kind of a services the cities urban local bodies have played a very important role fine in the health care they have played an important role but at the same time the finances of these urban local bodies they have been severely drained they have been severely reduced and because of that they are also cutting down on to their expenditure but they should not cut down on to their expenditure because such expenditure is very much critical to a state government now the reserve bank of india uh, the present report that we are talking about it has also provided uh, commented that the functional autonomy of civic bodies must increase find fun their autonomy must increase but how to increase that autonomy on that much has not been said fine so we need to empower financially our urban local bodies now guys first of all if i just tell you little bit more about this particular thing when we talk about india clear the 12th five year plan the 12th five year plan has called the cities the 12th five year plan has called the cities as the uh, the cities has the engine of the growth much of the gdp growth much of the consumption much of the aggregate demand it is being raised by the cities and the cities they are being governed by the urban local bodies so if the urban local bodies will not be robust into the cities the development of cities will not be able to come now what are the issues with respect to the urban empowerment basically it has been provided that the pandemic had brought large number of challenges on our city Uh, fine it has been provided by the rbi that 221 municipal corporation in 2020 and 2021 fine seven, they seven uh, out of 221 70% of them have saw, have seen a decline into their revenue but at the same time the expenditure has increased by 71.2% so on one hand the revenue is declining on another hand the expenditure is increasing as provided by the rbi report so the financial strain financial stress is there into the urban local bodies fine the second thing is that the river reserve bank of india had provided this thing that in india the property tax is not properly explored 
fine either the property tax is not properly charged or if it is charged then the basically uh, the, the, uh, basically the diligence has been very much less people are not paying it now according to the oecd that is the organization for economic cooperation and development india has lowest property tax collection rate in the world so property tax to gdp ratio of india if we see it is one of the lowest very big problem fine second thing is that the urban development is a state subject clear urban development is a state subject but up till now much of uh, interventions for the urban development has not happened in 19 it since 1980s only the urban development has become a very important debate into the india what happened in 1980s the national commission on urbanization was formed then the 73rd constitutional amendment act 74th constitutional amendment act came through which the uh, grassroots democracy grassroots governance was being talked and actually after the 74th constitutional amendment act only the urban development has basically given a more important place now guys what happened we actually are empowering the local bodies we had provided into the 12th schedule that the 18 of functions into the 12th schedule we had provided that 18 of the functions are only to be done by the urban local bodies but up till now the financial empowerment of these urban local bodies have not been asked you came out with the 74th constitutional amendment act you create give a constitutional status to the urban local bodies 12th schedule was created into 12th schedule the 18 subjects functions have been given but where is the money fine this is a big problem then next thing that has been there that the investment into the urbanization has not happened fine financial capabilities have not been explored only one state has done a good work that is the kerala so in the kerala there is a people's plan uh, where the 40 percent of the state's budget is given to the local bodies 40 percent of state budget is being given to the local bodies so that they can work on planning they can work on giving the basic amenities to the citizens etc so therefore it has been said that a functional autonomy is to be given to the cities. Here it has been said that immediately we need to transfer the 3F to the uh, urban local bodies. What these 3Fs are? Number one, we need to transfer them the functions. More functions are to be given. Then the finances are to be given. Find the money is to be given. And the thirdly, functionaries are to be given. The human resource, they are to be given. Now it has been said that actually even more problems come into the ur urban local bodies because of the taxation reforms that have happened into the past. Now what are these taxation reforms? Now earlier, now before the value added tax came and these centralized taxation systems such as the GST came, the, the, uh, basically the urban bodies okay, or the state governments in fact they had a power to collect the octroi to collect the octroi. Now what is octroi? Octroi is a tax that is collected by the local body or by a state government when the goods are entering into the territory. Is it clear? So when the goods are let's say entering into a territory, the local body can tax them. Now what had happened? This octroi has been subsumed under the GST. Now, the Finance Commission are recommending the grants to the urban local bodies based on to the demographic profile. Now, there are certain numbers that have been given. Please pay attention here. It has been said that actually earlier, 55% of the total revenue expenditure of urban center was met by Octroi. 55% of money was coming from Octroi. Now, in that place, the grants are being provided and now only 15% of the expenditure worth of grant are being given. So, basically what had happened, a gap has come. And here, there is a difficulty to sustain the functioning of a city then the next thing that has been provided here that the gst has now come and completely the power of the taxation at the local levels have been robbed from them we often give the example of the scandinavian countries that the scandinavian countries the development is so good the infrastructure is so good the cities are working so well but at the same time nobody says this particular thing that the a larger chunk of the income tax is given to the state cities only fine in india no specifically directly the income tax is not being given so a very large chunk is given now a committee was formed by the ministry of housing and urban development to review the 74th constitutional amendment act and this particular committee provided that mandatorily 10 percent of the income tax which is collected by from the cities is needed directly to the cities as a matter of grant it is needed to be given so this thing has been suggested but up till now nothing has happened now what is the way forward what is the way 
forward. So the way forward goes like this. Number one, it has been provided that there is a need of a change in mindset for the state government as well as for the central government. It has been said that that the cities need to be seen as the important centers of governance and they will not be seen as an important center of governance until and unless empowerment will not come. So sabse pehle, first of all, there is a need of change of mindset that is needed. Fine. Second thing that has been provided is that the cities should not be just be considered as entrepreneurship spaces. Fine. Where just they are providing the opportunities for competition. They are not just focused that okay how they can be made more attractive spaces of investment. Rather they need to be seen as a spaces for planned development. Is it clear? So planned development needs to be carried. And then third thing that has been provided is that now the cities they are also facing the challenge of the climate change into this particular thing the adaptive strategies needed to be developed into the cities so therefore the resource now more resource is to be given to the cities so that they can get the qualitative and quantitative data so that they can make the cities disaster resilient fine then the next thing that has been there that the piecemeal approach or the piecemeal approach or the compartmented segmented approach will not required what we have come we have selected certain cities and we had said that okay we will develop them the smart as a smart city now this particular approach is needed to be immediately shut down what why what happens it further widens up the gap between the different set of people now let's say that the people living in a state city a city they are the smart city people Set people living in B city, they are non smart city people. So further, a wedge or a divide is being created. It has been provided that every city, their own citizens should be asked that what is their developmental need and on to that particular basis, the grant is to be created. Fine, stop making the tags of smart city on some selected cities. This has been suggested. Then the leadership has been emphasized. Now many a times we see that into the cities, the mayor, they are in some of the cities, they have just the t uh, the term of one year. Now one year is a very less term and the leadership cannot make any kind of a substantial change. So the mayor's tenure needs to be made universally five year. Is it clear? So this is the things that have been suggested here. So guys, it is a good article with respect to the local level development. Very good article directly can be used into the GS paper number two. I hope you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article. The many problems of online anonymity. Okay, so this article will be important for GS paper number three. GS paper number three, internet technologies, internet technologies and the threat of internet technologies, the threats of social media, the threats of social media. Fine. Now, see this particular thing. Basically, guys, as we talk about uh, that, see, as the modern technology has brought many of the boons for the mankind, at the same time, the modern technology into the form of social media had brought many of the challenges also. Today, we see that the social media platforms, they have become the eco chambers. They are spreading fake information, misinformation, disinformation, propaganda is being shared from the social media. Now, in the social media, what is the problem? Problem is the online anonymity. Is it clear? Let's understand the online anonymity by the help of this particular article. Now this article talks about uh, pseudonymous social media handles. Pseudonymous social media handles. Now what is this? Pseudonymous social media handles. Now the pseudonymous, uh, it, it means that what will happen? There will be a profile onto the social media. Onto this particular profile, this profile has been called as a pseudo profile. Either the profile picture will not be there or the name will be a very generic kind of a name. Only first name might be there or a kind of a fictional name will be there. So what happens? The pseudo identities are being developed onto the social media. Is it clear? Now, basically, what is the reason why there is a pseudo names or the fake identities are being developed? Now it has been provided that into these pseudo names, the, I told you that they might not have picture, they might not have bio, they might not have complete address, they might not have their complete name. Fine. So large number of these pseudo identities are being there. Why? The reason number one is that the neighbor reason number one is that basically many a times certain people they want to maintain the anonymity so that they can speak the truth against the governments and they are not charged for what they have said so therefore the anonymity is being is needed and therefore the pseudonyms are being used onto the online social media platforms another reason is that many a time anonymity is uh, anonymity it gives the keenness to participate into the online conversation without being judged for their past experiences let's say that I am uh, gay okay and I wanted to share certain things fine so I can involve into the debate without actually being judged 
fine so this is the another way that the anonymity is needed and for that the pseudo identities or the pseudonyms are used on to the social media then after that next thing that is there that basically many a times the real person does not wants that he should be targeted into the real offline world so therefore he uses the anonymity now when the anonymity is there is it clear and a person is not being getting impacted into the real life what happens without inhibition without any hesitation he frame the opinions and he spread them clear it is true that many a times the anonymous handles they tend to be abusive clear the, though all the handles is not are not abusive but majority of them are abusive they involve in trolling they involve in uh, basically in, in cherry picking in targeting they spread the propaganda they spread the hatredness is it clear why they are spreading it because this anonymity doesn't holds them accountable fine there it has been said that basically uh, they are spreading the misinformation they are spreading the disinformation fine so therefore right now there is only one need that we need to come out with a legal mandate that how we can hold the people accountable who are using the, you know, the the pseudonyms fine so to hold them accountable a legal law is needed but guys though this particular thing has been suggested into this particular article but i personally believe that there will be certain flip sides flip implications also that will be there when we talk about the freedom of speech and expression under article number 19 freedom of speech and expression has been given now if any kind of a regulation will come it will be seen as a stifling the freedom of speech and expression granted under article number 19 19 fine so however this was a some personal suggestion that was given into this particular article certain key uh, contents you can pick up from here so that is all about it and now we'll move to the next article a dangerous precedent now uh, first of all guys uh, this particular article okay it has been written by uh, mr derek obren who uh, who is from opposition so specific targeting of the government has been done a political tone has been in there into this particular article we don't need to go on to that particular line just the academic content that could be there which we can use we will be taking it so this particular article we will be used in G, will be using in gs paper number 2 fair elections gs paper number 2 elections fair elections now see this particular thing it has been provided that the budget session of the parliament will begin on january 31 fine first of all there will be the president's address fine and then the union budget will be announced on the february 1 now earlier the union budget was presented on to the last working day of february but in 2017 what happened the then finance minister changed this particular tradition and from now and then in 2017 he said that the budget should be announced on 1st of february so that actually the money is available for the next financial year when it will begin begin uh, when it when it will begin in april 1 so this particular change came in 2017 now it has been said that see there is also the model code of conduct which is announced by the election commission now the model code of conduct basically it is a way to provide the level playing field to all the political parties when the model code of conduct comes into the place no political party will announce basically the government will not announce new projects new schemes will not be announced why so that basically even the opposition even the parties who are not in power they get a level playing field if the model code of conduct will not be there, the ruling government can announce many number of new schemes new initiatives new projects so that it can influence the voters so the model code of conduct con conduct comes into the place now the model code of conduct had come into the place as the elections have been announced in many of the state governments or many of the states such as the goa elections are there punjab elections are there fine up elections are there so this mcc which ensures makes tries to create the free and fair elections fine it is being violated why because now guys as the budget will be announced on to the february one and then the elections will be there in many of the state the state the government union government can come out with such kind of a schemes can orient certain schemes towards those specific state and it will try to influence the elections into those particular states many type of welfare programs new schemes tax measures fiscal benefits are usually announced into the union budget and this particular thing will happen this year also now the union government should have actually deferred the budget announcement actually in 2000 and 12 also the similar situation happened when the upa government was 
yet to was to announce a budget and after the budget the elections were there what happened at that point of a time the oppositions they asked that the budget should be postponed and then the budget got postponed actually now taking a cue from 2012 government should again postpone the budget as so that a kind of a unfair advantage is not there so this is just the suggestion that has been given clear so that is all about this particular article nothing more than that okay just uh, guys uh, and see it is a very good suggestion that has been given which you can also implement in your uh, in your questions fine on elections that is all now we'll move to the next article dip in eastern swamp deer numbers so basically with respect to the prelims examination questions on to the environment ecology and uh, uh, wildlife conservation flora fauna we can use this particular thing so secondly in gs paper number three also fine though the direct question is not expected but in some of the questions if let's say the conserv conversation conservation is being talked about there you can use it so what this particular article is all, all about majorly it might be important for your prelims examination now what this particular article is all about now guys this article is talking talking about the barasinga barasinga which is also called as the eastern swamp deer barasinga also called as the eastern swamp deer now guys the eastern swamp deer fine they are the vulnerable species onto the iucn red list they are vulnerable onto the iucn red list their population has is going down and actually they have become extinct into the south asia in india around the in in, in india actually to the kaziranga national park they are there now what this article talks about let's see is let's see this so this particular year the population of these eastern swamp deer it has reduced in the kaziranga national park where they were actually found fine though their numbers have been reduced but there is also one good news that is there that now these particular eastern swamp deers they have been distributed to areas beyond the kaziranga national park where they were traditionally found now they have they are actually being seen into the orang national park fine lokova uh, burchapuri wildlife sanctuary they are also they are being found now basically the expansion of one particular animal to the other areas is very much important because into that particular case if there is one disease comes if there is any another problem that comes the entire population of the area can be wiped so the geographical expansion is very much good so with respect to the eastern swamp deer if number one their population is re got a little bit reduced and number two their expansion has happened one is good news one is not so good news so this is just what has been provided into this particular article fine please don't go much more beyond then this then it will not be important so that is all about this particular article i hope that you have understood it and with this we come to an end to the today's newspaper analysis guys i believe that you are understanding the news fine and you are finding some utility into this initiative if you have liked please do hit the like button please to spread the initiative thank you so much